Hello everyone. Today we are doing a full detailed unboxing. We are also doing some small swatches. This is the A Gallo 48 half pan set. A Gallo is a handmade watercolor company from Assisi, Italy. The paper packaging is beautiful, handmade and sourced locally from Assisi. The tin itself is nothing to write home about, but the golden sticker with the logo is quite pretty. I admit the small paints look delicious. Thanks for reminding me not to eat them, I guess. <laughs> Today's swatches will be on the provided swatch card. However, tell me if you'd be interested in a full swatch video. I have the footage. It just takes time to edit and I need encouragement. Today, the swatches are small and we'll start at uh, 12.35. I enjoy watching videos showing detailed unboxings. I'm going to try and keep it quiet when we get to the swatching, but before then, I'll just give you a few of my thoughts. I'm not a big fan of uh, mop brushes, but this brush came with a set, so I'll use it for the swatching. I knew I wanted to keep most of the packaging, so I needed a container to keep the paper wrappers. This old candle holder came in very handy. The pads were surprisingly difficult to remove. I'm glad I had a palette knife on hand. The wrappers themselves were pretty. They also were sometimes hard to remove. Each pan is labeled by hand with the name or the pigment, and the wrappers have all the pigment and paint information. Another reason to keep them. I love that sound. The wrappers make the pans bulkier, so the fit is pretty snug, which makes taking the pans out more difficult. To keep the wrappers intact, I had to push out the pans. I only had to cut a couple of wrappers to get the pans out. I used the back of my palette knife to kind of push them out. <laughs> okay, that clicking sound is very satisfying. I prefer usually using single pigment paints. I also really like cadmiums for my yellows and oranges. However, a gallo paints do not use cadmiums or any other toxic paints. And they have many, many multiple pigment paints. So why did I go with a gallo? Lately, I have been experimenting with minimal paint mixing, meaning I am trying for punchy un unapologetic colors that might mix on the paper. And I knew I was getting what I was getting into with a gallo paints which was a very bright variety of colors and a lot of convenient mixes. And these did not disappoint. Thankfully, I've never really been a fan of cadmium reds. The reds and magentas in this line are stunning. That PR122, the magenta, particularly nice. You can see how much extra space wrappers take. You can fit easily an extra pan in there. <sighs> I mean, it's not just me, right? They look like pieces of candy. No wonder they were a choking hazard. I 
am always wary of purples. My favorite purple is Cobalt Violet, but Edgal does not do Cobalts. The reason I'm wary of purples is because of the mixes. And oftentimes I feel like whatever I mix can be good enough. But Noturno is a beautiful dark violet. It might be my favorite one, or at least my top three colors from this set. So Egal doesn't do cobalt, so I was curious what colors they would be providing and how the lapis lazuli yinmin blue would look like and whether they would take over the role of the cobalts that I usually use. I'm also not a fan usually of phthalos, but the main reason is because they are overwhelming in mixes and it's very difficult to temper the blues. However, if the phthalos are already coming tempered in mixes, then I have a feeling this is going to work. For me, at least. Looking at the teals and greens, there are also a lot of phthalo mixes. Multi-pigment paints are not a bad thing, but they are a new experience for me. I think the entire palette is going to be an interesting experiment for me. So I know Egalo doesn't use toxic pigments, but I was disappointed to see PY129, Chartreuse, Green Gold, um, wasn't part of the set because my understanding is this pigment is not particularly toxic, but I don't know if the way it's sourced, that may be the issue. I would have to look into it. However, I'm glad that they provided the chromium oxide green. I know a lot of people don't like this color because of its opacity, but I actually do enjoy it because for landscapes and botanicals, it gives weight. This is possibly my favorite row. When I first got these paints, I debated between this set and the Naturale set, the Earth set. But ultimately, when looking at Igalo, I wanted to deep dip my toes into the multi-pigment paint waters. I did want to try my hand at more phthalos and I did want a good selection of earth colors which is why I decided to go for this set.
Morelone is a beautiful color and definitely one of my favorites from this set. Of all the paints, I think the Burnt Umber is the one that looks the driest and most brittle of all the paints. Otherwise, most of them just look a little shiny, but none of them are actually sticky. Even those that left a little bit of paper residue on the pans, I think were simply that way because they hadn't completely entirely cured by the time they went in. Before we go to the swatches, a quick explanation as to why I left this footage in. When you receive brushes that are hard because they've been gummed to protect the tip, I suggest using warm water, not hot water, warm water. It will help dislodge either the gum arabic or whatever glue element that they used. Don't break the tip and smash the tip into the bottom. Hit it slightly on the side. And uh, afterwards, clean your water, get fresh water. Go into the swatches, I'll let you guys go. I hope you enjoyed this. And please, if you want to see the full swatches, please tell me in the comments. Tell me if you try a Gallo paints, if uh, you have, which colors you've tried or what set you've got. Um, and what do you think about multi-pigment paints? It seems to be that it used to be, no, no, nobody wants multi-pigment paints. And all of a sudden it's like, ah, we don't care. And, all of, and, and it used to be people hated opacity in their colors. And now it's like, oh, there's things that are fun. Um, I feel like the watercolor com community is growing and finally opening up to things like yes we can use white yes we can use pastels yes we can use black yes we can we are growing because i feel like as a community we are learning more and not limiting ourselves which is a great thing to see um in any case i'll see you guys next time take care ciao